Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. <laughs> He's my best friend. Not everyone has a best friend, but I can tell you that once you have a best friend, that person is a priceless treasure and it goes both ways. For some people, their best friend is their spouse. It's not uncommon to hear some husbands speak of their wives as their best friend ever. That is really cool. There are some people, their best friend is not necessarily their peer or in their age group. I can see a young teenager, for example, who enjoys the company of his grandfather. They spend a lot of time together. Grandpa becomes a confidant and advisor. They do lots of things together. They eat together and then they hang out together. They are best friends. There is one celebrated friendship, however, in the Bible that undoubtedly talks about two people who were best friends to each other. I'm talking about David, the son of a sheep owner in Bethlehem, and Jonathan, the first prince in the nation of Israel. His father was King Saul. Their friendship didn't last for very long. Jonathan died in a war at the time David was 13 years old. And that was a bitter loss to David. Today, I want to talk about another friend, and his name is Jesus. No, I'm not being corny. Please, don't get me wrong. It is not because I'm an introvert and antisocial why Jesus is my friend. Let me tell you how it all went down. You see, Jesus found out that I was a sinner. It really wasn't a secret, but he did something extraordinary to reach me. What is strange, he did not come to earth to live. He came to die. Seriously. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Luke 19 and verse 10. That is exactly what made him come to earth. And every person is considered lost when they don't have a relationship with God through Jesus. We will explain that later in this talk. So Jesus was going to be a sacrifice so that humans would be set free from the bondage of sin. So this is what Jesus had to say about that. In fact, listen to him the day before he died. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. John 15 and verse 13. That's what I'm talking about. But what is weird about that statement is that we were not really friends, but he died for me anyway. His death was the great price so that any human being could become a friend of God or a child of God. Well, he died back in the first century and he came back from the dead three days later and has since returned to heaven, but somehow his death is the only gateway to become a friend of God, regardless how many years have passed since his death and resurrection. Each person has different experiences, but as for me, I became a son of God or a friend of God by inviting him to come into my life. This is strange language, I, I suspect, but this is what he did. Since then, it has become a constant, he has become a constant, steady source of blessing and joy in my personal life. But let me not rush. You might have heard of the sinner's prayer. That is a prayer based on a scripture which says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. Another scripture which says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. I promise that I'm telling you the truth, and yes, it is as simple as I said it. 
In fact, elsewhere in the Bible, it says, as many as received him, he gives each of them the authority to become the sons of God. John 1 and verse 12. Oh, and simultaneously, when you get the gift of sonship of God, you also get an invisible gift called eternal life. Ah, this is like a visa given to you that you can enter a foreign country. And in this case, the foreign country is heaven. If you become a Christian, you get your eternal life visa right away, but you don't have to use it. In fact, you can live a good life here on earth. And when you get older or you become a really elderly person, it probably means that your time is coming very, very soon when you will use your visa eternal life that will cause you to leave life here on earth and go to live with God in heaven. Finally, I want you to know that becoming a child of God is the best decision you could ever make. Take it from me. You know how whenever there's a nationwide election that candidates work hard to get your vote and imagine the person you voted for that that person won the election and becomes the leader of the country. You would commend yourself for having made the best decision. Well, it is just the same way with Jesus and more. Jesus wants your vote. The devil wants your vote too. This is where it gets exciting. Jesus wants to take away your sins and set you free. Satan wants your vote so that you can go to hell with him. Jesus, my friend, is the best choice. When you become a bona fide friend of Jesus, you will never, ever regret it. It's an exciting life. It's a great experience to have a friend like Jesus who it is described that he is closer to you than a brother or a sister. Jesus gives you maximum, maximum blessings. And all he asks of you is to stay in full relationship with him. Maintain your friendship with your best friend.